Uh, Vinny Perth is with us. Vinny, good morning to you. Morning. How are we all doing? This is um, it's an important window because the last window started disastrously, improved slightly, and then finished rapturously. So, you yeah. know. Yeah, no, I, th- I think at, at this stage, every window is important. And we, we, we're going through this cycle of after bad performances, a lot of noise around the team and good performances, a lot of praise. So we're still in that cycle, I, I feel. And it is a difficult window in many ways because the Scotland game will be a tough game, um, absolutely tough game. So, um, yeah, it's, 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 I suppose that's, that's the gig, isn't it? Do you have to live with it? It is the gig. And um, it looks like we're getting towards a settled team or at least it did look like we were getting towards a settled team because the team that beat Scotland 3-0 at home played really well but there's probably going to be some changes yeah and, and I think this is like it's something I've heard it discussed at different stages I think it's so important that, um, and I of, often reference it here that we don't really see or the average fan doesn't really see championship football that much mm. and so much of our team is based out championship football so form is huge coming into windows um, and I think Stephen has to pick the team on form but he also has to be loyal at certain occasions and there's just no hard I, I imagine there's no r- rules on you know in terms of how you pick a player because you have to be loyal to some people and you have to understand the makeup of your team uh, but at the same time you can't ignore people's form and uh, you look at Chidozi's form recently we would have said maybe he wouldn't be in the starting team, but you have to say on form he deserves to be in the team. So yeah. that's sort of where we're at as a as a nation. He's been great coming off the bench for Ireland, and then when he started games, he hasn't been quite as effective. Yeah. And like, look, that's you know that's fairly natural when you're very early in your international career that yeah. it, it's a different scenario. So does does Kenny in some ways think actually I'm going to leave him in reserve, or does he go actually you're in form? I want you to score early here. Yeah, well, I, I, and I think the key to it is some some people who I suppose that the, the pro Kenny gangs would have been saying we've done a huge amount of hay, he, a heavy lifting of building a squad so the key is uh, we have options now I would say and I think you could have there's probably four or five arguments around the team who will play who won't play which is a good position to be in we're probably missing I would say a Garrett Bale a, a, a Robbie Keane a, a star that takes us to major championships but at the same time, we've built a team. There's a lot of players playing at a really good level. Um, you know, we, we all talk about premiership, 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 but if championships at decent level, you look at someone like Dara O'Shea playing regularly for West Brom, I, I've often, people would say, oh, dude, these lads need a move. They've just been relegated. Sometimes, particularly when you're young, to be playing week in, week out at a really high level will help. I think we've got a lot of players in that window Albeit, when you look at Scotland, I think they've got maybe 10 players that are in the Premiership as well. So and we are as well. And playing. So yeah. we are a little behind and we like players playing at a high level. But I think the transition is, is starting to happen, I feel. We're, we're on the cusp of something. It okay. Really, it was really interesting reading, um, was it Damien Delaney in the Sunday World, I think, at, at the weekend, where he's kind of talking about, he, he, he was, he's surprised at how much backing Stephen Kenny has got and he was kind of pointing towards the qualifiers next March as maybe a period where... If those games are lost, then another referendum has to be on Kenny. Like, is it is it just an Irish thing now that after every single game or a window, we seem to have this referendum on Kenny, even though he signed the contract? Yeah, I, I think it's sport in general nowadays. I think people used to sit around the, the the table and work and have a chat about the match the night before. Now it's on social media. Now it's out there. It's in the world we live in. I think that's just the world we live in now. Uh, but at the same time, it is probably the biggest gig in Irish sport. Um, it's the most participated sport. So therefore. What comes with that is huge pressure. So, um, I, I mean, the answer to Damien's probably right. If we lose two or three games, there will be huge discussions because I think whatever about World Cup, I think we've got to be close to qualifying for European Championships or at least at least missing out by a bit, bit of bad luck at the end of the day. So I think, um, and, and I think the Nation League will help us get to that in terms of the playoffs maybe. So... Um, it's it's it. You would feel that it's it's almost harder not to qualify for European Championships nowadays. It, it, in in terms of these set up so many different ways and so many teams qualify. So there is pressure with that job, and I think Stephen accepts that. To be fair, let's look at the team that you've you've picked. Um, is this the team you think he will pick, or is this the team that you would pick? No, I did. Uh, it's so difficult because I mean you could pick three or four teams. I, I'm just looking at form and trying to. Learn from what 
went in the previous games and I'm trying to get inside of Stephen's head a little bit and saying, so therefore, I'm, I'm putting myself out there, this could change and, and, and I, I didn't know him as well as I think I do. But this is this is something I feel... Before I name the team, sorry, here's my question, right? You, you've talked about the championship and obviously Kenny's looking at the highlights and, and the wise guard of every every minute of every yeah. performance and his, his team are doing that. How important is the actual training sessions in the week of the game in terms of selection so 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 two points one one is on championship and form and like he goes to a lot of games so just just to not to go off not to not answer your question but a month ago I went to the UK for a couple of days I was actually in Fleetwood and watching them train how things done club visit and I ended up going down to watch Birmingham against Huddersfield and for an, the average Irish fan which I would be or we'd all be Scott Hogan hasn't done that much for Ireland he hasn't he hasn't looked sharp and when he's got his chance hasn't really taken it but I remember watching him going wow this this guy's a good player and I actually un we undervalue him because I've, I've been to see him live I've watched his movements and since then um, I've watched a couple more of the, of, of the Birmingham games he got a hat-trick recently he's in really good form but but for an Irish fan turning up if Scott Hogan happens to get onto the team sheet we're going to be going wow where's this come from Yeah. but the manager his staff Keith they, they, they'll they have been to Scott Hogan's like the night I was there Keith was actually watching the game as well he right. was in the stadium so the point I'm making is we, we, we have to be careful how we view teams and pick teams and we've got to understand that these are doing their job week in, week out. If you miss a chance for Ireland in the last four or five games, we remember that. Yes. Whereas actually what they've seen is like the development and evolution and fitness and the, the so, markers and, and all that stuff. And again, and, it's, uh, and, and stop me if I'm going overboard, but Birmingham play a similar way to Ireland, okay? So therefore, Scott Hogan is playing in a, in a sort of similar system right. as uh, an Ireland. And, uh, his, mo his movement across the front post is probably better than most strikers we have in okay. terms of his movement. So it's just a, it's just a point to say. So if, if Scott Hogan is under new management, he's really fit at the moment. If he comes in and trains this week and trains brilliantly, you've got Keith watching him live, you've got Stephen watching him live, Stephen Rice is probably watching him live. Well then... There is an opportunity for someone like Scott Hogan to jump the queue and say, I've got to play someone in form. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that's the that's how these things all play out for an Irish side. Yeah, because I, like, I wouldn't say we were surprised that he was in the squad, but like, you know, listening to you now, it makes more sense that, and it will make more sense if he gets some game time, some meaningful game time, which he probably will over the two games. Yeah, I think I think there's a possibility. Look, we've got strong options there, whether it's uh, Albania or... Um, Obafemi. Obafemi, like between the two of them. You've also got Callum Robinson, Troy Parrott. Again, we're, I heard someone say he's not playing that well. Someone who knows the game of football is not that playing well. He hasn't scored goals. He's been exceptional for Preston. Has he? Yes, he really has. Okay, because um, we um, haven't heard this. Like, yeah, really, cause no, none of us are watching Preston week in, week out. Or, or Of course or, we're not. And <clears throat> uh, Again, I've seen Preston live and I was really impressed with him. And is, um, I think... He, he, but he had Preston aren't scoring goals. I think we all know that. And but he's been really, really good. And a couple of goals would have transformed people's opinion of him. But from a form point of view, I think he's really good at the moment and and playing really well. So okay, okay. Let's name your team then. So Bazunas and goals. Again, I, I'm trying to get into Stephen's head a little bit. But uh, Darrow Shea, Egan, and Collins is a back three. Again, that that could change. But I just think on form. I think it would have been really interesting if Omar Bamadeli had been fit because, again, himself, he's in excellent form for Norwich. He, that would have that would have uh, given Stephen a real sort of decision to make. Uh, but uh, again, it could it could easily be a Shane Duffy, and again, you could split hairs whether Egan plays and Collins because of, you've got to get the balance right. Collins plays that central role really well of a back three, but. Uh, that's what I. That's my gut feeling. He'll go with again. It could be Seamus Coleman in the back three or Shane Duffy. So we've Instead got real of options. Probably O'Shea. I think Nathan Collins and Egan are the certs. Okay. It's who comes in. Who comes in? And I think. And does the balance of the back three get affected? Like. Well, to be fair, like uh, Duffy can't really play the right of a tree. He has played there. Duffy would have to be the centre one. Probably the problem when Shane plays there is, is the quality of passing isn't as good as other players. So if you're going to play three, you'd like to play out from the back. Um, but Nathan Collins or Egan can play um, 
on, on the sort of left of the tree, no problem. And, and Seamus Coleman on the, on the right of it. If Seamus plays there, it's almost like, and I keep using the Chelsea thing, it's almost like if you see Astor Quetta breaking out of that Chelsea back tree, yeah. I think Seamus can do that to a point. Yeah, a and point. so where does Nathan Collins play in the three? If it's, if it's Collins, Egan and O'Shea, who's left, centre and right? Yeah, it's, 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 I, I know Egan can play in the right and that's, that's the decision, that's about the balance and that's where this one confused me a little bit. I spent a bit of time on the back tree, not 100% sure because you prefer Nathan Collins in the centre but I think that's where he's got his real quality but Egan is probably more likely to be the centre one I'd say but you're splitting hairs okay. there in terms of who plays and O'Shea's on the left O'Shea Dar O'Shea be more I would say operate off the left of it Is James McLean now first choice left wing back? Um, it looks like it I mean um, I think the other option there is Robbie Brady I know we do have Matt Doherty could play there uh, but I think James McLean, particularly away from home, it's J- James is fascinating, isn't he? Like people give out about him, then he comes in and does brilliantly, yeah. and he's like, well, "We need James McLean, we need him." So it's it's difficult. Ninety six caps. Yeah, no, it's an incredible uh, career, uh, and, and by all accounts, a great person around the the change rooms, the squad, and look, I don't think you need to you, you, you need to question anything about James and his desire it's sometimes there is a lack of quality at times and his crosses sometimes let him down but I think away from home this will be a difficult tie so again you could see I mean I mean, we had the debate not that long ago about whether Doherty play left wing back could be and James Coleman right wing back the one that misses out on this and I think is really unlucky is Alan Brown in those last two games was excellent and I'm a real Alan Brown fan again plays week in week out with Preston and Alan Brown is a goal threat we haven't, haven't had goals in our team yeah so I'm re- it's really harsh on Alan Brown. I was thinking in Coleman team. in the team because I just think like I, I think he will pick Coleman because of the experience and, and but I don't know. But like Doherty played really well at left wing back. So there is there is room for Doherty to take McLean's place and Alan Brown to be yes. rewarded for his form for Ireland. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised if that happens, but it's it's sometimes you're looking for that balance of left and right footers and yeah. um O'Shea will play in, if if O'Shea starts for argument's sake, it's great sometimes on if a right footer plays in the left because up the whole pitch up for, for a team. <laughs> so you can't have all you, you you're looking for a bit of balance and again, trying to get in his head is again it could be wrong. Does any weight have to be put on the, the previous Scotland game? Like looking at the team that day, obviously you had Brown and, and McLean as the as the wing backs, you had Collins, Duffy, Egan that day as the three. Like Kept a clean sheet, played well. Should should any weight? I know the game is back in June, but should you put any weight on the, on the, on the fact that we they, they, they played well against? Well, well I suppose like the the obvious answer is yes. So why change the team? Should the team we played won three nil? But again, it goes back to form. It goes back to who's in who, who who's in really good form. If you look at our midfield tree, like of Malumbi came into the team, gave us huge energy that day. Mm. Jason Knight obviously gave us a uh, real running power, and I think. I think we need that in that midfield. I think we've seen a slight tactical change where we sort of went to that um, midfield tree, I'm going to call it, but um, we probably needed that in the first two games. We weren't that good in that last window um, and we got something out of the Scotland game. Again, uh, I, I think you have to, you have to, and that's why I wouldn't be surprised if if you went with the same front two as that day, but I, again, I'm saying... Chidozzi's form is that good mm. I presume he's going to pick him I just yeah. presume he's going to pick him um, and yet if it's uh, if it's <laughs> Parrot and Hogan if it's uh, Parrot and Obafemi like Obafemi would be a bit of a wild card given his club situation but yeah he hasn't played a lot of football in the last month It's it's been two minutes or and then beyond that it's been about four or five weeks so it's almost like when when to- uh, calls are so tight as a manager. Sometimes, if you have an excuse, it's great. Yeah. You know, it's it's almost like yeah. it's not that you're going to admit to. You're not really playing at the moment, so that sometimes can tip it one way or the other. And I think we're we're at real judgment calls here in terms of the team. It's not like we're we're you know we're debating whether you know a star should play ahead of uh, up and coming. I think a lot of our players are sort of so evenly matched. It's about finding the balance and who's on form. And, I, and I've said about 10 times now before I'm at the moment coming into this window I think overrides yeah. some of the performance against Scotland Whatever about people not seeing much of the Championship uh, not that many people seeing that much of League One mm. and uh, Knight we hoped would get a move um, 
I don't know what his contractual situation is, but I think he's up at the end of the end year. Of this year, yeah. Yeah, and so like, look, whatever you do, whoever his advisors are, don't sign anything yet. No. Just let's wait and see exactly how well the rest of the season goes and then you'll have hopefully your choice. Is he doing well at the moment? Played, he actually played second striker according to Transfer Market in the last game, but he'd been right back or he's, right wing back. He's been right back or may, may, they've, they've, they've started as a wing back and then he ended up in a back four. Right. Um, he's, done, he's done quite well in that position. I don't think... It's, and that's where there's no hard and fast and rules. I think Robbie Brady is, is going to be considered as probably left back option or left wing back option. Right. Um, and not a midfielder because of he's playing there week in, week out at the moment, Robbie Brady is. But I think with Jason Knight, I think we need his... If you remember that position that, say, Jamie McGrath played away in Portugal, I think we need that running power from Jason Knight. Therefore, I think he played in midfield. Has he done well? He's done, he's done quite well. Um, again, we look at these young players with Irish eyes he was he was available for the whole championship to sign one year left in his contract could have got him out Derby imagine for small money so people in in English football are probably still watching him at the moment saying what is he where is he and where is he at so I think the next sort of obviously, there's no doubt about it, the next couple of months are crucial from I think the international football will help him in terms of getting his next club or wherever that may be, but I, uh, he's done okay. He's played quite well. He's playing is the main. He's thing playing, as well. and yeah. again, I like y- you could sign for a club at Middlesbrough for argument's sake and and be off the bench. And be off the bench, and I think at, at that young age, we we need to do this as well. We need to be patient with these guys and say, um, we're, we're, we've some like I go back to Dara O'Shea. He's gonna head. I don't know the figures, but he's gonna head into you know maybe twenty four, twenty five, a couple of hundred league appearances under his belt. There's guys coming out under twenty three squads in City, Liverpool, Manchester, who uh, played. haven't played, yeah. and I think that's crucial for us. So we need to be patient with the, with this group. Well, let, let's talk about the patience because Malumbi, I think, um, is somebody who uh, came in the team, played okay, played badly for a while, lost his place at the club, got a move playing football, playing great, full of confidence. Like, that's been the kind of... It hasn't been a straight line for him at all. Yeah, but who would have thought young players would have ups and downs? Like, And, and we, we jumped on all these young players from the 21s and we had to be patient. And again, just to just point the note, and I'd put Malumbi in, but I wouldn't be shocked if Jeff Hendrick starts. You know, I wouldn't be... Stephen generally picks him when he's fit. Um, and he's back playing now to a point. Well, that's the thing. He dropped him for the Scotland game after the for the third and the, the three window the last time. Malumbi came in. He did come off the bench, but he wasn't playing any football at that stage. And now he's playing week in, week out. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to think that um, and Jeff's been a brilliant servant for Irish football, really has. But I'd like to think that Malumbi's now ready to overtake that sort of position and, and make that his own. Cullen Malumbi and whatever the configurations ahead of that will be at different stages. So I think we, we could do with that sort of... Whatever, I don't like using numbers, whether it's a six and an eight or two sixes, I think Malumbi and, and, and Cullen are really, potentially really good combination. I think it's probably time for Stephen... Well, it's a big decision for him because he's been loyal to Jeff, and I think Jeff's a senior member of the squad, but it's a big decision. It seem, seems a stretch <clears throat> to say this, but familiarity is key in terms of players you know, getting used to playing alongside each other. Like Malumbi, if he does play, does that give Darrow Shea any uh, increased chance of playing? The fact that you know, they're, I think they're roommates together as well in, in yeah. Birmingham and they're playing together every week for West Brom. Is that familiarity an, an important thing in Stephen's mind, I wonder? Uh, um, yeah, no, I think it is in terms of players. I, I have to say, I think the FEI, the small bits and pieces you see it of, of it, and I think they've been very good and clever in their social media output. Uh, you really get the the sense, and I've ta- I've I know some people who work within the staff. Um, it's not something I'd ever really discuss with Stephen, but I, I mean people in the staff. You really get a sense there's a real good uh, band of sort of brothers developing here in terms of this group, and and it helps when so many young players are coming through at the same time and they've played a lot. Of, so I think that's huge in terms of building something. I always reference Wales and what they've done, you know, getting to major championships and progressing. And you felt that what Wales, the trick with Wales was they built okay, the Gareth Bale to get the big moments, yeah, never get away from that. But they built it almost like a club team. Yeah. And I, I get the sense this Irish team is, is doing that. So O'Shea and Malumbi's come, you would imagine, is like the clip with James McLean, uh, Ruben Nathan Collins is brilliant. 
yeah. brilliant and the fact he left it because that's what goes on in dressing rooms yeah. and uh, and when the cameras aren't there it's probably a little bit worse as well like to be fair so I think that um, that is a huge point I think the, a lot of these lads are growing up together and I think the evolution of them helps but we, we made this point for the last two years but we can't control the club form ultimately and that's why we're going to have to pick on form again I keep saying it uh, Josh Cullen's form since he's moved has been excellent yeah yeah and <laughs> I, I'm going to put it out there. I was a, I was a doubter at times of, of Josh Cullen, not not because I didn't think he could become a good player or he has all the attributes. I think um, I, I was looking at him going, go, go to the next stage. The, and the, his career development has been brilliant. And I, I'm starting to feel now he's, he's gone to the next stage. He has to, particularly that position, it's so important. Like I, I remember one of the earlier games where um, Ireland really struggled and looking at the stats as you do as a coach after the game and he never got the ball and, and, and passed to Matt Doherty or, or right wing back at any stage and you're like that's a big problem for someone's going to play in the six as in getting it off uh, the left wing back and going out to the right wing back why? because the opposition have to shift all the way over And but I've started to see him added now as little things to his game a little bit of confidence uh, f- more forward passes I think uh, from him and he's gone up not that he needs to impress me, but he's gone up in... I think he's gone up and improved and improved. I think we've overhyped him to where he is, but he's actually getting closer to that hype, if that makes sense in my view. And I think I think that move to uh, to England has really helped him now. It's like, I've done me hard work, I've learned the ropes, and he, he's with a manager now that ultimately really trusts him. So I think I think now we're starting to see the, the fruits of that. And he's still only 26. You know, like he he could be a really good player for the next six or eight years for Ireland and um, and at club level as well. So uh, you know, fingers crossed, they're going to be fighting out for a promotion this year. So are you feeling confident? Like you, you made the point to wrap this up. You made the point that Scotland have a load of players who are playing Premier League football and are actually also in good form. You know, Andy Robertson's out, and they've got three other guys who can fit in there who are like all very good. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, no, I I think the last window was really difficult for Scotland. They lost their game. Uh, the playoff for the the, the World Cup, um, the counter Ireland, I believe it was a really bad squad and uh, sort of bad um, vibe after being knocked out. They did really difficult. Premiership players don't like those end of season four game windows. They're really really difficult. Where us as fans go, just get on with it. You're playing for your country. It was really difficult. I think when you look at their midfield, that started that day, McGregor, uh, Scott McTominay, and, and McGinn. It's probably better than their midfield, in fairness. Yeah. Right? But he didn't play well in the day. We out-hassled them. We outworked them. All of those things. I don't think it'd be like that in Hamden. Uh, but their manager's under a lot of pressure. And they, they need a result. He needs a result. But momentum is huge in football. They, they, we, had it. We, we look like we've been momentum going into the game. They look like they don't. Uh, so it's probably a big game for both managers in many ways. And... Um, <sighs> Uh, I'd make Scotland slight favourites, believe it or not, even though they, they beat us quite well. Yeah, here. I think they've they've definitely got a better selection of players. It depends on what he does with this window and if it's like one of those, oh, I'm not going to pick my full team, I'm going to broaden my squad here so he buys himself that little bit of time and it's all building for the Euros or if you I'm pick sure his full team. I'm not sure he can team, afford to do that. Well, I was going to say, you yeah. pick your full team and you can go balls out and try and win it. and like. I heard talking about young players earlier on while I was in the car and I'm going, the, the answer to, to, we won't get into it now, but the answer is, you're a manager, if they've got to win the next game nowadays, football is now cutthroat. Yeah. You don't get yeah. long-term... They don't care about the players. They care about winning the results. Well, well, winning. To, short answer to you, now that, now that is the job of the director of football, to right. manage the club longer term. Managers are managing the short-term windows. Hope, they're hoping it's two or three years. Lucky enough, it might be seven or eight. Director of footballs are meant to mind these people and say, no, he's a long-term one first. That's yeah. the way it's meant to work. All right. Um, that makes perfect sense. As ever. Vinny, good stuff. Thanks a million for joining us. That's uh, Vinny Perth with us there.